Now, Ross, you are the Vehicle Dynamics Manager for SVO. Quite an enviable job, but I imagine it comes with a little bit of pressure. Yeah. You're the man responsible for why this, well, you and your team are responsible for why this drives the way it does. Yeah. What have you done? How have you raised the bar for yourselves <laughs> in doing this? Um, well, yeah, like I said, my team and I, a really small team of passionate people, had a really strong target of what we wanted this car to be, which was basically the most dynamic, most capable, best on-road, very capable off-road Range Rover in history. No pressure then. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, uh, shall we go for a ride? Let's, get, let's do it, yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. So yeah, this car is a prototype car, obviously. It's quite a late level prototype. Um, all the hardware on it is correct from a dynamics perspective and the software is about 80 to 90 percent scale so so we're nearly there in terms of the finished we're product. Nearly there. this yeah. could for all intents and purposes this could be the last car we might not change anything else yes yeah um we might tweak tweak a few bits but it, anything we tweak is just like steering and it's a little bit of damper control yeah, nothing, yeah. Nothing so much. it's not the sort of thing that's going to be night and day difference between no, now yes. and when the production car is no, it's the bits that out. keep dynamics engineers awake at night but no one notices <laughs> okay <yeah. laughs> this is a should i or shouldn't yeah, i it needs yeah. to be 0.01 of an amp more yes yeah okay <laughs> no, it doesn't. Don't worry about it. so yeah it's generally gone through all of our sign off it's basically press the button send it um, yeah but there's still you know if you tell us we've still got a week or two left and we're going to use it so okay yeah yeah generally this is the car it's camouflaged it's been shedding camouflage throughout the day. So yes. If you hear any <laughs> rattling noises, it's yeah, just camouflage yeah. coming off. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's 6D dynamics, which means there's no conventional mechanical roll system in the car at all. So there's no mechanical link across the car. Um, it's all hydraulic. So the old arc system from the standard car is gone um, and they're replaced with a hydraulic or two hydraulic circuits which provide roll resistance and also pitch resistance because any high performance SUV you know it's like a speedboat isn't it yes, it yeah. and it's only the mechanical bump stop that stops it from doing that really so this is a an actual resistive force against that yes yeah so this is to stop any squat under, under yeah. heavy acceleration yeah um, and more modes than we've ever had right so comfort mode dynamic mode SV mode configurable and then all the off-road modes okay so this is still very much a Range Rover in very the much. sense of what some people expect a Range Rover is you still got grass gravel snow yeah much and wading and all the usual stuff but then yeah. when you want to head to the Norch life yeah <laughs> it's a which is more your playground yeah exactly so um, we're in comfort mode yeah just in normal thing so we did all that to the suspension and then we also changed the steering ratio because I thought it was really important that we change that to sharpen the car up. So we've gone from 17.5 oh, down to 13.6, which is pretty massive. Really. Yeah, big step. Um, and what that does, obviously, as you can gather, is like as soon as you put a small input in, yeah, a relatively small steering wheel input, you can change the side of your lane with yeah, I don't know, 10 degrees of steering angle, and it's a linear ratio, which is important because it means that it works well with a rear-wheel steer system. But if you put in a fixed steering wheel angle like this, you get a fixed output. Yes. You don't get any gain. And some cars, you get kind of this response, you get that, and you get another one. Yes, yeah. Um, which, the faster you go, the sort of exponentially gets worse to the yes, response. Yes, yeah. It makes it feel unnatural. So, a lot of emphasis on linearity, and again, like a coherent package together, really. Which is the same mindset we had with F-Pace and that kind of stuff. So in comfort mode, this is the sort of roll angle you can kind of expect. This is like your everyday kind of normal mode, really. Yeah. And then there's a the pitch system. So if I brake quite gently now, a little increase in brake pressure, mm. the car takes a little set and then kind of yeah. keeps it there. Yes, yeah. Which is calibrated to be relatively soft in comfort mode so you can still feel what you're doing um, is it important to have a little bit of movement there you don't want to have something that yeah I mean, you need a bit of weight transfer yeah. yeah weight transfer really helps 
kind of put the load on the biggest tyres. So yes, we've got yeah. differential tyres, 305 on the back, 285 on the front. So we need to use those tyres and put a bit of weight there. And we send torque rearwards as well. So it's comfort mode, lovely yeah. kind of normal everyday mode. And then dynamic is stiffer dampers, um, increased steering weight, and more rear biased drive okay. line. But well, we're still on the same ride heights. We're still on the same one. ride, yeah. yeah. So we're always 10 mil lower than the standard car. Yeah. So already, yeah, I can sense there's not not the same level of roll there. Yeah, it's reduced by quite a lot, mainly just through damping rather than the roll resistance system. Yeah. So we're not yet into that no, 60. Not yet. Yeah. Well, we're using it, but we're not using it to its max. season tyres. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean tyres have come an awful long yeah, way now have, yeah. in, uh, from what we used to think about what all season tyres were like. Yeah. And then the SV mode, you can get to it either there on the screen or, yeah. or at here. the bottom of the wheel. Yeah. Um, and it changes quite a lot of things. So yeah. the car's lowered itself 15 mil. Yes. So we're 25 mil lower. Um, the roll pressure is now at maximum. Okay. So roll pressure is at 53 bar, which is the maximum the system can deliver. Actually, it was 50 bar. We pushed it to 53 because we wanted a bit more. Okay. Because you guys always want more, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can never have enough. I'll have 60 if I could. But yeah. Uh, 53. Yeah. Um, and uh, pitch pressure is kind of set to what it yeah. can achieve as well. Um, and you get on the screen a power and torque curve and yes. uh, a LATAC graph or yeah. the lateral G meter. So this is already, I didn't just restart the car, every time yeah. you restart it clears, but last time we pulled one G LATAC and one and a half G under acceleration. Okay, yeah. And didn't do a big rake, but that could yes, go yeah, up. Yeah. It's quite fun to try and fill that in or <laughs> draw things. That's, yeah, that's where your day's work is done when <laughs> yeah. you do that. But you also get more. A little bit, you get another 50 newton meters as well with, yeah. with so dynamic now launch. We're going to do that now. Yeah. So you get launch mode in this mode. You get track DSC and DSC off as okay. well. Naturally, within all the driver modes, of, um, driver assistance systems have calmed down anyway mm -hmm. because yeah. we've lowered the car so much. The CAG has come down. You can turn the system back a bit. Okay. Everything we've done so far was all systems on. Mm. They're not really that intrusive anyway. But um, yeah, so we do a launch. Yeah. position and put your foot down and it, it starts to rotate around yeah. you but it doesn't break away into oversteer. Yes, yeah. um, and then obviously in this mode as well if I brake it doesn't pitch really at all. Yeah. Um, and then if you accelerate sort of generally stays yeah, right. It's still quite level there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what it does mean is because there's no linkage for the off-road stuff you can have it really soft because there's no mechanical roll bar there. We yeah. all st struggle with like articulation, whereas the amount of roll you get now is okay. Yeah, yeah, three it's times very noticeable. Yeah, yeah, three or four times more than it was before. And, and you just you just simply couldn't do that with a no yeah, because there's always going to be a point where the roll bar hangs the wheel at, up. At, at its maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the pitch system in this mode is pretty much turned off, so you get a lot of. 
which is what most people expect to see. Just yeah. uh, really hunkers down and um, your bonnet's up and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A big you really do feel it. Yeah. Whereas in the other mode, even under the braking, you don't notice the pitch. You kind of feel it like your, your bum's in the seat, but you're not yeah. having your your kind of head being flung forward yeah. or yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Let me. Um, did a few demos of this system early days and I built the first um, first ever mule car and I lined up a load of senior management to sort of show them what this was. Yes. Um, I made the old Range Rover Sport SVR and this car and I made them stand by the obst tower and yep. did a launch in both cars and towards coming towards them and going past them and the old car's like Brr. Yeah. <laughs> and this car is it's quite spooky. Right. Because it doesn't it just do that. Moves. It just sort of hovers towards you really right. fast. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, it's almost deceptive in a way when yeah, it, it does it. Yeah. And uh, weirdly, like in the very early days, quite a few people said, the car doesn't really feel that like quick, to be honest. Yes, yeah. Um, and then you measure it on, on a lap, and it's like pff, Numbers don't seconds lie. faster than yes, the old car. Yeah. You, know, it's, you wouldn't see which way the old car, uh, the old car wouldn't say which way it's gone you know, on the public roads. If you really hammer it, it's yes. gone. So it's just because the body's not being reacted that much compared to what we're all used to um, and by by eliminating that kind of pitch and roll and it, it, does that also does that gain you time if you're on, if you're doing yeah. lap times that's going to gain you time it gains you time yeah. it keeps traction pretty much optimal because um, you can use the front tires more because you've not less lost all the weight from them yeah you don't saturate the rear tires as quickly um, and basically just keeps everything in, in line as where it should be um, and it's quite unique. Uh, there aren't any other pitch control systems out there. Yes, yeah. Um, and in a car like this, it makes the most sense, really. Mm. I mean, because uh, when you dealing with a car of this size and this scale, you know the the, the numbers add up, start adding up pretty quickly yeah. when you're adding speed and things like that to it. So yeah. is that's why that's why you're looking for those extra couple of. Yeah, so something to like look that. after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess, through. So we're in dynamic mode now. Yeah. So this is quite a good bumpy road. Makes yeah. the car work hard, but and can also very much highlight the, the shortcomings of it. Yeah. Of it. seems to go exactly it's not it doesn't it doesn't I don't get the sense that it's kind of pushing at all or it's no you can't hear the tires how yeah. can you, you would have done previously so this is comfort mode really crappy road yeah yeah very much like uh, a sort of back country road yeah, yeah. At, at 90 mile an hour yeah over a jump it's <laughs> doesn't phase it at all, does it? No, it just goes with it, to be honest. Like I said, this is a prototype car, so a lot of the trim and stuff have been a part a few times. But the suspension just kind of soaks it up, really. Yeah. Does the suspension, I mean, are you getting what from the suspension what you thought you would get from it? Or has it surprised you guys in terms of just how much it's been able to change the car? Um, I think, there was a lot of focus from the team at the beginning of SV mode. Yeah. You know, what's the ultimate ultimate? What's the roll angle? What's the roll gradient the thing can achieve? And the target was two and a half degrees of roll angle at one geol attack. So it's like, that's what we're aiming for. But it's the other stuff that surprises me. Like it's still, it can deliver all of that stuff. It's got all the body control in the world, but it's actually very, very livable and mm. the actual sort of unexpected benefit to the off-road modes. Um, so, we're in SV mode now. Yeah. So, uh, track you see.
like a hot hatch down there, <laughs> down an SUV. Yeah. <laughs> I love the power delivery, like mid corner there, it's planted, I feel it come around. Yeah. Big bump on this, wow. on this bend. Yeah. phased at all. Yeah. It was a lot of effort to deal with that end of travel. Yeah. Because um, you can have all the body control in the world, but if you go for that big compression there, yeah. in the world, in the stiffest mode, and the, the wishbone slam into the body, or you know, get a big bang, or yeah. you're suddenly really abruptly thrown out of your seat, then no one's going to use the mode. Mm. So. The good thing about the suspension is, yeah, it delivers the roll angle target and the pitch target, um, and it absorbs a lot of bumps because it's hydraulic. But also, so much more effort's gone into the car to make it work. Yeah. So the rear subframe's been completely redesigned. I spent six months on the driven simulator working out where the roll center height should be to maximize the grip levels of the chassis to deal with the CFG position. Um, the things like spring aids or rebound springs and bump stops and stuff have been designed to deal with that impact in a nice progressive way um, and still be durable like this thing still does the whole durability and robustness cycle of the, of the standard car it's done I don't know how many thousands of laps at Nürburgring yeah um, needs to be serviced in a normal dealer <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but it's on 23 inch carbon fiber wheels yeah and carbon fiber brakes in all seasons <laughs> How do you find the wheels from a dynamic standpoint? Like, do you, dynamic standpoint, do you find it? I think, do they really make that much of a difference losing that thirty odd kilos of once from mass? Uh, and, yeah, yeah, it makes a difference. Like we have to tune the car in three configurations really. There's carbon carbon, so carbon brakes, carbon wheels, which yeah. is the lightest, and then the heaviest is iron brakes, alloy wheels. Yes, yeah. But you can also have alloy wheels, carbon brakes. Yes, yeah. So you've got three things to think about. Yeah, and. The sort of the, the the effect of reduced unsprung mass is slightly different steering feel, mm. it's a slightly more precise steering feel, um, and less things like hub shake or if you go over a manhole cover, you get less kind of yeah. afterwards. But you have to make sure you've got the right level of base damping to deal with that in every configuration. So we damped it in the worst case, and then laid these nice bits onto it, um, and it just kind of worked. So it's kind of tuned on the heaviest of heavies, and you put the light bits on, you get a nice benefit. Where if you go the other way, you'd lose some of the benefit. So you ready to sign it off? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think we so. We can yeah. go and drive it soon. Yeah. Okay, Ross, really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, that's really good.